Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been some time, but I'm so glad to be back in my endeavor of sharing all of my knowledge related to makeup. So in continuation with the series of Makeup for Dummies, today's video is going to be all about makeup brush basics. Keep watching. So in today's video, we will be covering the types of makeup brushes, the parts of a makeup brush, the kind of bristles used in brushes, the shape and density of the brush and how it affects the application of the product and also holding of makeup brushes. So let's begin with the type of makeup brushes. A variety of makeup brushes are available in the market and can range from your eye brushes, your face brushes, lip brushes, body brushes, etc, etc. It can be very confusing. So in today's tutorial, we are going to limit the scope and uh, broadly classify the brushes into eye brushes and face brushes. Now let's come to the parts of a makeup brush. Any makeup brush available in the market has four components. The handle, the ferrule, the hair bundle and the flower tip. So although not absolutely necessary, but it does help to know the make of the bristles of your brush, whether they are natural or they are synthetic. Natural brushes are made from natural animal or human hair. So they are going to have a cuticle which is going to absorb most of the product and hence give you a lesser product payoff. Synthetic brushes on the other hand are made from synthetic fibers and not natural ones. So they will not be having a cuticle which means they will not absorb your product and not only that, they are generally easier to maintain and cleaner. Natural brushes on the other hand are more porous than their synthetic ones. That means uh, they have a benefit of picking up powdered products and applying them more seamlessly than their synthetic counterparts. However, synthetic brushes have come a long way and are getting only better with time. And also, if you're against animal cruelty, then I would recommend going for the synthetic ones. Now coming to the shape and density of the brushes. It is important to understand how the shape and the density of the brushes, the length of the fibers and all of that plays a major role in application of makeup. Basically, the longer, fluffier and softer fibers are going to pick up less of a product and apply less too. However, they are fantastic tools to blend. Let me show you some examples. So here I have with me a couple of brushes. One is the eyeshadow blending brush and the other one is a blush brush. Both the brushes are long, soft and fluffy and they are great tools to blend. On the contrary, there are some brushes which are more dense and have shorter fibers. They don't necessarily have a lot of movement when you run your fingers across them and are typically better at picking up a lot of product and applying a lot of product. So they're not necessarily great blending tools, but they're great placing tools. So here I have with me two brushes. One is the foundation brush. And the other one is the eyeshadow cut crease brush. Works great for concealers too. And both these brushes are densely packed and have shorter fibers. Basically, understanding how the shape, size and density of the brushes affect your makeup application really can take your makeup skills to the next level. So I kind of wanted to demonstrate the differences between these styles and the application technique. So let's get started. So here I have with me a short densely packed brush, basically a shader brush, which does a great job at picking up a lot of product and depositing it too. However, it might not be your best tool when it comes to blending. This is a synthetic fiber brush. It's flat and very densely packed. It is a great tool for picking up cream shadows or concealers or anything with a creamy liquidy texture. 
However, it doesn't do a great job with powders. Then you have this brush where the bristles are more longer, they're fluffier. So it's a great tool to have softer, more blended, a more diffused kind of look. This is typically a great tool used for crease shadow where you are aiming for a more blended, a diffused, a softer look. On the contrary, if I were aiming at a more carved out cut crease, then I would have a hard time doing it with this one. Also, if I were to try and apply my eyelid color with this one, I was to get a surer wash and not the punch of color that I was aiming at. So this brush is going to pick up less of a product and apply more surely. Okay, let me explain. Here, I have a great quality eyeshadow so that we don't compromise on the color deposit or the pigment payoff. So I will be taking swatches, a couple of swatches on my wrist. There is no moisturizer. It is not being primed. It is basically bone dry. So first I'm going to take this flat brush. This is a basic simple uh, eyeshadow brush. I'm going to dip it in this color called Henna from the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Remastered Palette. I'm going to load up this side of the brush with a lot of color. I'm going to tap off the excess. And I'm going to swatch it here on my wrist like this. As you can see, it does a great job of packing and punching a lot of color. Next, I'm going to take this longer, softer, fluffier brush, typically a blending brush. I'm going to take the exact same color in the exact same way and apply in the exact same way. So I pack a punch of color here. I dab the excess and I swatch it here just below the previous one. So as you can clearly see the difference, this one is a lot more surer and diffused as compared to the previous one. Now let's repeat the exact same procedure with shimmery eyeshadows. I'll take the same brush, the densely packed one, cleaned. I'm going to dip it in a shimmery shade called Moon Dust from the same palette. I'm going to load it up with color, dab off the excess and apply it right here below the previous swatch. Can you see? It's actually a little surer on camera than it is in person for some reason. Let's do the same with this long fluffy brush. Let's dip it in moon dust, dab off the excess, and swatch it right here. Can you see the difference? There you go. So, I want you guys to see the difference here four swatches, two brushes exact same method of application and the same eyeshadows. The only obvious difference here was the selection of brushes. I hope you could clearly see how the brush selection determined how the product applied. Now let's come to holding the brushes. It is indeed very important to know where to hold the brush on the handle and how that is going to allow you to blend the product and apply. If you're trying to achieve a really well blended, well diffused look, then hold the brush further out towards the tip and move your brush in back and forth motions like this called windshield wiper motions or little circular motions like this, you will definitely get the desired look. If you're trying to pack on color on your lid or if you need more coverage with your concealers, try to hold the brush closer to the ferrule as it gives you more control over placement of product. Also, do not use swiping motions here. Use the dabbing or the stamping motions for best results. That's all for today guys. Thank you for watching. In case you have any questions, do leave them below. If you like the video, do leave me a thumbs up. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, stay beautiful.